Now in the world of PC gaming, VRAM is king, some might say, but how much VRAM do you actually need? Is it 16 gigabytes, 12, 8, or in the case of the Zotac and NVIDIA GTX 1060, will 3 gigabytes do? Well I guess we're about to find out, I hope you enjoy the video. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech and I thought we'd take a look at the 3 gigabyte version of the GTX 1060 today as I just happened to stumble across four of these cards which came in pre-built so I purchased off eBay to be recased and flipped on. Unlike its bigger brother, the 6 gigabyte model, Nvidia has worked as trickery and it's a cut down version of the card. Now the 1066 gigabyte is probably the lowest I would recommend going these days when putting together a budget gaming rig. But can its baby brother cut the mustard? Now we're going for 60 FPS today by any means, so we'll be making the most of upscaling technologies like FSR 3.0. But as I write this script post benchmarking, I honestly think you'll be pleasantly surprised with all things taken into consideration that is. So let's not waste any time and jump straight into testing and I'll let you make your own mind up. So the system we'll be using today to test the GPU is my main rig, which is an i5-13400F, 6 performance cores, 4 e-cores and 16 threads. It's basically an i5-12400F, but with a couple of e-cores added in, we have 32GB of DDR4, 3200MHz RAM, a B760M Pro motherboard from ASRock, and next to that we have the specs of our little GTX. 1063 gigabyte we're running the latest drivers today may the 7th 2024 the card has 192 bit bus there's three gigabytes of gddr5 samson memory we have 48 rops 72 tmus and 1152 shaders it does support directx 12 at a feature level of 12.1 boost clocks around 1500 megahertz uh sorry 1700 megahertz and the memories running at 4000 megahertz so first up we have fortnite and uh, all the games tested today are at 1080p and we're going for 60 fps by any means you'll also have to excuse there's no game capture sound as i didn't realize my capture card wasn't recording uh, the game sound for the benchmarks today so i've put a nice backing track on and uh, yeah 1080p low here with uh, taa at 75 percent resolution scale and we achieved a very respectable average frame rate of 150 58 fps with 1% of 84 and 0.1% of 48 i had certainly had no complaints in playing through the few games i did i was able to be competitive and getting some kills and stuff like that so for really for fortnite a little card like this with three gigabytes of vram will certainly do the job so moving on now to something a little bit more demanding and that is call of duty modern warfare 3 and uh, no complaints here at 1080p basic settings with FSR 3.0 set to quality and we achieved an average of 79 FPS with 1% of 62 and 0.1% of 47. Really nice experience here, I mean it's not a high refresh rate experience but it's a plus 60 pretty much all of the time except those 0.1% and uh, yeah I had no complaints playing this and uh, I could play this quite happily all day at these settings so another win here for our little 3 gigabyte uh, GTX 1060 it's worth noting here that the texture uh, limit is nearly uh, run out so we can't really turn anything up higher so basic preset it is all the way if you want to be playing COD and you have this little card but I would recommend this it's certainly a nice entry level experience and it will certainly do you until you can uh, upgrade to a better card. Moving up the scale of demandingness now and a new one to my benchmark suite and that is Mana Lords at uh, 1080p high here today with FSR set to quality. Uh, we achieved a respectable average of 74 FPS with 1% of 52 and 0.1% of 5. Now this is an early access release title and I believe it's a one man band uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty impressive really for one guy and uh, yeah it's an enjoyable experience uh, you know it's a fairly medium sized settlement I've been building here over the last couple of weeks and I had no problems you know navigating the menus playing the games except every now and again there was just that one spike uh, 
which is represented in the 0.1% lows. But you can certainly play Mana Lords like this. It's quite a slow paced game, so you could get away with capping it to 30 FPS and you'd have a very enjoyable experience. Our first AAA title of the day next, and that is Cyberpunk. And uh, I've run the in-game benchmark today, as it seems to be a fairly uh, accurate comparison to actual gameplay. And uh, I've gone with 1080p low, with FSR 2.1, and uh, that is set to balanced. We achieved an average of 60 FPS, with 1% of 43, and 0.1% of 41. And to be fair, Cyberpunk does actually look pretty nice still on low settings, and I'd be quite happy to play through the game like this. Uh, yes, it's not an amazing experience, it's not a high end experience, but considering the card we're using today and the cost of that card, around £40 in the UK at the moment, uh, it's certainly a passable experience and I would quite happily play uh, through the game like this. Up next, and the game I'm playing quite a lot at the moment, and that is Forza Motorsport. Now, we're beginning to get in the realms of <laughs> looking a little ropey around the edges, uh, and to achieve our 60 FPS plus target today, I had to go for 1080p low, which this game doesn't look uh, too great on low. The textures start to look a bit ropey, uh, with FSR on balanced and a 70% resolution scale. We did achieve our target today though of 68 FPS with 1% of 50 and 0.1% of 33. Now I have a 32 inch monitor and trying to run this game at 1080p with FSR and then the res scale. Uh, it's looking a bit rough around the edges but if you had a little 24 inch 1080p monitor uh, it probably wouldn't look as bad but the game still playable and I would call it a pass. We could turn things up to 100% resolution scale and we would see an average of in the 50s. Now that may not bother you in a game like this, it's not a too fast paced game, but I do like to see uh, 60 FPS and that is what we're trying to achieve today. But we have a pass here, uh, barely, a barely pass, but we'll call it a pass and we'll move on to our next AAA title. Uh, the Last of Us Part 1, great game, loved it on the PS3, loved it remastered on the PS4 and uh, I love it even more on the PC. Uh, we're at university today which is sort of nearer to the end of the game and uh, it's got a lot more optimised since we first started. I remember playing this on release with a GTX 970 and I think we were getting about 30 FPS at a push. But today we did okay, we went for 1080p low with FSR free and we did use frame generation here with balanced FSR and we achieved an average of 76 with 1% of 47 and 0.1% of 45. Now this was capped on the PS3 and PS4 to 30 FPS and I loved both playthroughs at the time. So having a little more frames to play with on the PC is uh, no hardship. We could cap the game at 60 FPS and that's probably what I would recommend and you would have uh, no problem playing through like this. Uh, if you haven't played through this game yet, it's a brilliant game, I recommend it and uh, if you've got a 1063 gigabyte, you might just get away with playing it. So on to our last title and uh, that is Starfield. Now there was a saying once and that was can it run crisis but I think in 2024 it should be can it run Starfield as uh, this unoptimized Bethesda monster seems to bring even the most uh, high end of systems to its knees. Uh, but that said it did put up a good fight the little GTX 1063 gigabyte and we did achieve an average of 31 FPS with 1% of 27 and 0.1% of 27. Uh, we did have to pull all of the rabbits out of the hat for this uh, 1080p low with uh, indirect lighting set to medium FSR 3.0 frame gen uh, and 70% resolution scaling uh, not really a pass uh, in my opinion I wouldn't go out and buy the game if you've got a 1063 gigabyte but if you've got Xbox Games Pass and you fancy just dipping your toe into the title uh, you'll certainly get a, a basic playable experience as 30 is the bare minimum really so i think that will bring us to the end of the benchmarks today and i'm going to pull up a graph now as who doesn't like a graph and you can see the results here today certainly titles that are more esports focused like call of duty modern warfare 3 and fortnite we have absolutely no problem running on our little three gigabyte uh, 1060 as we start to move into the more harder to run games 
games like Cyberpunk, Forza, even The Last of Us now, and uh, newer titles like Manor Lord, we do have to start making some sacrifices and using more FSR uh, imbalanced and even some FSR free frame generation. But we did achieve our 60 plus FPS target in all of those titles today, which was quite impressive actually, considering the age and the cost of the card these days and the fact that it does only have 3 gigabytes of VRAM, guys. Uh, but the one title that did struggle, and it was no surprise really, was Starfield. Uh, with barely scratching above 30 fps and you know this title brings even new gen cards to its knees you know i've played this on an rtx 3060 and it wasn't it wasn't the best experience really so that's the graph uh, there are results of our physical games i have run some uh, synthetic benchmarks i've also run some synthetic benchmarks with an overclock so we can just see what performance we'll gain uh, in an up with an overclock to the card so i'll bring up those figures now and heaven benchmark first stock we achieved achieved a score of 2640 with our fps at 104.8 now overclocked i put 500 megahertz on the memory and 200 megahertz on the core and the card was completely stable it's a really nice uh, little card it's overclocked really well our overclocked score jumped to 2950 and our FPS increased to 117.1. So a nice little gain there. Uh, Fire Strike next, stock. And our Time Spy score was 4,057. And our graphics score of 3,645. Overclocked, uh, we now have a legendary score. So we're breaking records here today with our little GTX 1063 gigabyte. Uh, our overclocked score was 4,589 and our graphics score increased to 4,146. So overclocking the card, you can probably expect about 8 to 10% performance improvement, which really, uh, for a card like this, it makes sense to overclock it. Now, mileage does vary on overclocking, which is why I've ran the card stock today for the benchmarks. But you can expect to see an improvement with overclocking, but obviously it's your risk, guys, and you can obviously undervolt the card as well uh, if needed, as it's a a 10 series an nvidia card uh, so that brings us to the end of the video uh, is three gigabytes of vram enough in 2024 uh, just about uh, it's just about passable i mean everything taken into perspective if you're you know wanting to put a cheap pc together and you're wanting to play a bit of fortnite or apex something like that this card will still be perfectly fine for that and even if you wanted to dip your toe into some of the lighter to run AAA titles from a year ago or a couple of years ago but the newer games like starfield and the widow makers like that you know this card just really uh, isn't cut out for titles like that the uh, the six gigabyte version is about 10 percent faster and obviously it has the extra vram so it might be worth spending the extra you know 20 pounds over this one for that and also the rx 580 four gigabyte and eight gigabyte uh, are around the same price as this the three and obviously the six so yeah thank you for watching the video uh, please leave a like and a comment down below i'd love to know your thoughts uh, you know on this subject really and obviously the video or anything else that's on your mind uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already take care god bless and i will hopefully see you in the next one